All right, everyone. Hello and welcome. It is your host here, Doug Diamond. Hope you enjoyed that video. Thought that was pretty interesting. Did you guys catch the uh, wonderful and somewhat hilarious, actually it was really hilarious, debate a few days back? I did. I was able to see that. So uh, anyway, we'll talk some more about Biden and the whole political situation as well as we move forward tonight. Hello and welcome. It's your host, Doug Diamond. We are doing another Diamond Report Live. We are actually live tonight, which is good. Missed the last two shows in the last two weeks. It's been about three weeks since I've been here, though, because I think it was the 16th of June. So it's been quite a while. So I missed you guys, and um, I was traveling. So that's that's why, and we'll get into that some more as well as we move forward in the, the evening tonight. And I think we have a pretty standard length broadcast tonight. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I've got a few more videos and um, quite a few articles and things to talk about tonight. So we'll see how it goes. 10.06 uh, p.m. on 7-7-24. Hope you guys have had a good last two, three weeks since I was last here. Uh, I've traded messages with a number of different people on the various platforms. And, um, yeah, everything's good. Everything's fine in my world. Just... Um, crazy stuff going on with my mother and um, nothing bad just uh, we were we were traveling we were um, at her property up in Indiana sorting through things trying to get it to a place where it could all be sold and, and uh, taken care of so we did um, make significant headway really good headway in that in that process so we'll talk more about that as we um, as we go tonight so anyway, hello and welcome. It is uh, HalTurnerRadioShow.com, the first article I have pulled up, as usual. And, you know, guess what? Another hurricane. Hurricane Barrel. I guess they're starting the hurricane season early, earlier this year than normal. It was at one point, I think, a Cat 5. Now it's maybe down to a 1 or so, looks like. Um, so you folks in South Texas, watch out. They're steering it right towards you. And um, I am going to predict, I have not talked, talked to Dane at all, but I, um, because I've been out of town again, and uh, we haven't communicated much other than a couple of emails here and there. Um, I predict, though, that he will, he will have quite a bit to say on this hurricane barrel um, as far as it being steered off of the path that was uh, the original trajectory, uh, which I think was um, more... I think it was more southwest than where it's headed now, uh, which is for headed directly toward Texas proper. So we will see exactly what happens. But it looks like uh, for the folks in South Texas, Houston area, and so forth, you better be prepared. If you're not already prepared, then it may be too late. Hurricane Barrel has begun its re-strengthening after leaving Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula and is now barreling toward South Texas. Landfall within 24 hours. This article was updated earlier today at 2.40 Eastern. Stores already selling out of food. Gas stations already selling, uh, running out of fuel. Update at the bottom of the page, which we'll get to. Hurricane Barrel came off the Yucatan, Yucatan Peninsula after losing half of its strength, dropping from sustained winds of 120 miles per hour down to 60. As of Sunday morning, it is re-strengthening fast with a sustained winds now at 65 miles per hour expected to increase to hurricane strength 74 miles per hour before making landfall in Texas on Monday morning. So within hours from right now. Latest weather com computer models are consistently showing where the eye of barrel will make landfall. And then there's embedded videos and pictures and things here. If you guys want to check this out, and a lot of people are talking about this obviously, so you can find this information in many different places. So the update from earlier today on Hal's site, though, says hurricane intensity model has barrel intensified to a Cat 2 when it's uh, projected to hit Matagorda Bay, Texas. Last minute intensification upon approach is very likely. And my guess is that they are probably strengthening this thing, pumping it up as much as possible for maximum impact, maximum damage, in Texas, because how dare those Texans talk about seceding? How dare those Texans go against what the Bidens and and the globalists want? So, yeah. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully, uh, people will stay safe there. But it's not looking too good. So, South Texas, beware. Hopefully, you guys that are in that area or, or friends or family in that area 
are well prepared. So, anyways, feel free to look at that look at that article if you want to. And then Venture Sky is pulled up here as well. I've got um, the wind gusts on, and right now it's showing barrel with the northeastern quadrant here, 65 miles an hour. I guess is about the about the maximum roughly which that's pretty darn fast pretty high winds so it's going to strengthen to potentially a category two so we'll keep a sharp eye on that and um, I know you guys will as well <sighs> yeah all right well let's keep moving we've got uh, lots of stuff to talk about tonight here's the other article I had pulled up on um, house site breaking news China sends PLA troops to Belarus which is a message to NATO in an utterly stunning development in Eastern Europe, China has sent troops from its People's Liberation Army to Belarus to participate side by side with Belarus troops in an exercise as NATO places 115,000 troops on Belarus's border. So, more buildup, more saber rattling, as they say. The plane landed at the military base in Belarus and covert intel was quickly deployed to take a look turned out to be unnecessary because both Belarus and Rus Russia made public the details. The aircraft was a troop transport cargo plane from the PLA. Shortly after it landed, a small contingent of Chinese army troops deplaned and were greeted with a hearty welcome by Belarus military officers. Yes. Get some nice uh, baked bread there it looks like. As it turns out, this is not subtle at all. Message to NATO, China backs Belarus and Russia. It also turns out that this proves interoper interoperability between these forces, something that was not heretofore confirmed by the West. NATO has positioned about 115,000 troops on the border of Belarus, hoping to force Russia to lock in place about 300,000 troops it has on the border of Ukraine. Now that China has made its entry into the situation, Russia is now free to utilize those 300,000 troops along Ukraine's border without having to worry that NATO will enter Belarus. This is a very big change in the balance of power in Eastern Europe. It seems designed to give pause to NATO and to the West. Observers say it will either achieve that goal or perhaps trigger a much worse set of actions by the West. My guess is that's probably what's going to happen. This is now a tinderbox ready to be ignited by the smallest spark. So now we've got the Chinese involved here to some degree. And you'll see in a minute here that um, the North Koreans are also going to be sending troops very soon as well. I've got that article pulled up on one of my multiple tabs across the top of the screen. So let's keep moving. We've got lots to talk about tonight. This is the first article I had pulled up on needtoknow.news. Another website that I often reference, good site for um, independent news, G. Edward Griffin's website, needtoknow.news. Candace Owens reveals the shocking satanic origins of NASA, which we all call never a straight answer. Candace Owens explains how Aliester Crowley and Jack Parsons influenced NASA. Both believe they could summon demons, took drugs, and engaged in black magic, M-A-G-I-C-K. Parsons founded NASA's jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL at Caltech in Pasadena, that paved the way for rockets, the Apollo programs, uh, a big lie, right, and adventures in outer space, so they say. Candace said that Parsons linked science to Satanism. Parsons was investigated by the FBI as they believed he planned to give his rocket plans to the new Israeli government in exchange for admittance into the country. He died mysteriously shortly thereafter in an explosion. Hmm. Jack Parsons. And uh, the name that's not mentioned here is L. Ron Hubbard. He was also involved in this. You guys may have heard of him. Um, to this I say, Candace, what took, you, what took you so long? I've been talking about this um, Babylon working situation for quite a few years at this point. Apparently she has just found out about this. But yeah, Ali, Ali Esther Crowley and Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard. And in fact, I made a video about it. Here it is here. I reposted it three years ago. 
originally uploaded 831.20, and then my YouTube channel was deleted, the first one, which was my Diamond Disc channel on YouTube. So I reposted it to this channel that most of you guys are watching on right now, Take It to the Lord in Prayer, on YouTube. And it's End Times Dates Part 5, Hilarion and Babylon Working. So if you don't know about that, I highly recommend that you learn about it. But yes, it's also talking about Jack Parsons, Aliester Crowley, Babylon working, uh, Hillary Clinton is mentioned, and then, of course, L. Ron Hubbard that I also mentioned a little bit ago. So, very interesting information. Does it have any relevance to today? I think it does. I think it does, especially the uh, in, my, in my video from three years ago, I posited that Hillary would be... Um, in the next administration, um, meaning the Biden administration. And it was, of course, it was just kind of getting going at that point. And even though she hasn't been in the administration, she may be poised to be the candidate that replaces Biden in this coming election or the VP, potentially. So we don't really know where it's going, but I do think it's interesting. She has a new book out. She's making the, um, making the, the rounds and the various programs and is making herself seen quite a bit right now so we'll see how it goes i tend to think that hillary would be somebody you know one of the few that that could potentially replace biden if if and when um he is replaced um although i think it may be too late it's what i've heard it's too late on many of the um state um ballots so it's too late on in in some of those states quite a few of them to um, replace Biden's name, he's already got the delegates as well. And from what I understand, you know, it would be easier to replace Kamala at this point. And um, because they can't take them both off the ballot because then, then the money would all have to go back to the original donors. So I, my guess is they'll leave Biden on the ballot and um, they'll cheat to win and make sure that he beats Trump yet again. Uh, because as we know, that's what they did the first time in 2020, even with all of the... Uh, uh, massive amount of people standing up saying he should bow out now after the poor performance in the debate versus Trump the other night. I don't really see him going anywhere, and in fact, they seem to be doubling down. So we will talk about that more as we progress tonight. So feel free to check out this information, though, about Babylon working. It's really, really interesting stuff. And I read a, uh, a piece from a Tom Horn book. You guys may know may know the name Tom Horn. Um, he had a really interesting um book called saboteurs and i read a piece of that book in this video that's talking about this whole babylon working thing and then this is the other article i had pulled up on need to know news british prime minister uk teens will be cut off from banks if they refuse national service so they're looking to start drafting the youngsters British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak threatened teenagers in the UK who refused to take part in his controversial election promise of mandatory national service will lose their access to finance in banks. Every 18-year-old in the country would have to either join the military or spend one weekend a month carrying out community service. Debanking makes it difficult for individuals to participate in society. Sunak also suggested that young people could have their driving licenses removed if they do not comply. The opposition party accused Sunak of trying to get 18-year-olds to fix the problems that the government has created. Well, yep, that's part of it. Canadian Prime, Can Canadian Prime Minister Justin Tampon Trudeau froze truckers' bank accounts when they protested against mandatory jabs in February 2022, revealing world leaders' willingness to use individuals' money to coerce them. So, yes, this is yet another... Another uh, rung on the ladder, I guess, on what they're going to try and do to coerce people into doing exactly what they want. So, anyway, I thought you guys would like to know about that. Need to know news, And then some articles I found from Revolver.News, some various articles um, linked to from that site. Biden staff, quote, miserable, alarmed as pressure builds. So this is dated uh, July 5th, so just a couple days ago. Many White House Biden campaign Democratic officials are increasingly worried that fake President Biden isn't up to continuing his campaign or finishing a second term despite his insistence that he won't be pushed out. Mm -hmm. 
why it matters, outside pressure for Biden to drop his re-election bid grew wider and louder on the 4th of July, especially from major donors. Doubts are also rising inside the House. I like how they always say the White House says. No, the White House is a building. It doesn't say anything. The big picture, everyone is miserable and senior advisors are a total black hole, a White House official told Axios. If you're even trying to focus on work, nothing is going to break through or get any acknowledgement from the bosses. So you have to ad admit here, that I would think, that the morale in this group of fakers and um, A number one gaslighters has to be extremely low, extremely low morale. So it says, uh, everything feels like a weekend at Bernie's by his inner circle trying to prop him up. That's pretty much exactly what's going on. He's not quite a corpse, but he's getting there. He's getting there. And I say that with all disrespect intended. So take it for what it's worth. All right. And then let's see here. From a physician, Parkinson's disease might be Biden's best diagnosis. His clinical symptoms are impossible to ignore, this physician writes. So this is on uh, unreported truths on Substack. After this morning's article about the repeated visits by a Parkinson's disease specialist to the White House, resident medical clinic since last summer, last summer, a physician emailed me to argue that the specifics of Biden's diagnosis matter less than the fact his symptoms are now so visible. He consented to have his email published on the condition that he not be named. This is edited only for length and minor copy editing fixes. So this is the email here from this doctor. All the disturbing symptoms we all see are called Parkinsonism. That is, a, that is simply a fact. They consist of motor slowing, festinating gait with reduced arm swing, mask-like Faces, faces, reduced local, reduced vocal volume. In fact, in medical school, we watch videos of patients with Parkinsonism, like Biden, to illustrate to the students how this manifests. The only question is what's causing it. The best case scenario for him would be that this is, in fact, Parkinson's disease. There's a lot of treatment for the, and the cognitive effects can be variable and sometimes not that significant. Worst case would be Lewy body dementia. This can be rapidly progressive, and the diagnosis is usually only made post-mortem or based on the rapid decline. Other possibilities include Alzheimer's disease, though that is less likely to have Parkinsonism, and then finally vascular dementia, which definitely can present like this, and the course can be variable, sometimes plateauing for long periods of time. There are other very obscure causes of Parkinsonism that... Certainly could be a possibility, but much, much less likely. So the question isn't, does he have Parkinsonism? That is something that is simply observable. The question remains, and the only question is, what is causing this and whether there's likely to be significant and or rapid decline, particularly in cognition. The scandal is that they are hiding all this and that we are not having a public discussion about it. Well, they're not having a public discussion about it. All the rest of us are. I did notice that CNN chief medical correspondent Dr. San Sanjay Gupta was beginning to tiptoe into this conversation. So, anyway, there's more to this uh, email a little bit about this uh, doctor and what he's saying about Parkinsonism. So, who knows? But the point is, we all know that Biden's got some something going on, whether it's dementia or Parkinsonism or Parkinson's disease, whatever you want to call it, maybe all the above. Who knows? But it's like the uh, the left is pretending like they're just finding this out, which is quite a joke, if you ask me. RFK Jr. reveals hilarious reaction from Kennedy elites over Biden's debate performance. The reaction from Dems to Biden's debate performance is downright hilarious. Have these folks been living on Mars for the past three and a half years? Joe Biden didn't just wake up on debate day and suddenly turn into a dementia patient. He's been shuffling around, confused and wandering since the 2020 primaries. Conservative media and folks on social media have been calling out Biden's decline for years, while mainstream media 
played him up as this brilliant elder statesman, and with his hand firmly on the wheel, and I, I would say also on the nuke button, while mainstream media played him up as brilliant, his hand firmly on the wheel, leading us to some kind of blissful horizon. It's been a total snow job. Most of us saw through, th saw through it back in 2019. And the more we pointed it out, the more the regime-run media hid behind ridiculous excuses like deep fakes, um, they called them cheap fakes, and childhood stutters. So hearing all these horrified reactions to the debate performance is pretty amusing, especially since Joe's been acting like this, or worse, for over four years. Take the Kennedy clan, for instance. RFK Jr., who's throwing his hat into the ring for president as an independent, mentioned that even the biggest Biden supporters in his family were shocked by his debate performance. They even called it, quote, embarrassing. <laughs> so, yes, to say the least. And this is the cover of The Economist, apparently, with the walker and the presidential seal on it. No way to run a country. So that's pretty interesting that it's on The Economist. We know how they like to forecast things that may, may be coming soon. So what they're really embarrassed about isn't Joe's performance. They know he's been a mental mess. They're embarrassed because their secret blew up in such a big way that neither they nor the media could sweep it under the rug anymore. That's why you're seeing all these hysterical reactions and sudden calls for Joe to step down. This revelation didn't surprise anyone. It's just a horrifying reality that their well-kept secret is out for the world to see, and there's no fixing it. So they threw on their life preservers and jumped ship like the rats that they are. Yeah. It says, don't, believe, don't for a second believe that the folks at The Economist were clueless about Biden having pudding for brains all this time. Pudding for brains. So, fake President Biden and pudding for brains. I like that. Again, all disrespect intended. Tucker Carlson shares bombshell scoop on Joe, Jill, and Obama from an unusually trusted source. If anyone, it's anyone's guess what the next chapter holds for Biden, Biden's flailing campaign after a debate performance that was nothing short of disastrous, a display that didn't just hint at a bad night, quote-unquote, but plunged headfirst into dementia territory. It left a majority of Americans with their jaws on the floor. Now you might wonder, how could anyone be shocked by Biden's performance, especially since his cognitive stru struggles have been on full display on social media since 2019? But this moment really shows the powerful influence legacy media has, still has, over many Americans. Time and again, the media has whitewashed Biden's image, portraying him as this warm, grandfatherly statesman with a compassionate touch, yes, and lots of sniffing of youngsters, and a steady hand on the wheel of foreign policy, economics, and the total American experience. What happened last Thursday peeled back the carefully crafted facade. The media's mask slipped off. Mm-hmm. It's a good way of putting it. Revealing the truth about Biden's true capabilities or lack thereof. It was a tried and true Humpty Dumpty moment, the great fall, where no spin or scramble by all the king's horses and all the king's men could piece together that shattered image that laid on the floor of the debate stage. Yeah, and did you guys see the, um, the extra footage after the debate was over where Trump basically rushes off to the side of the stage uh, with no fanfare to Eye of the Tiger. Somebody's playing Eye of the Tiger over the top of it. And then it... Um, morphs and melds over into an Enya song showing Biden basically doing everything he can to step down that far off of the riser he's on so he doesn't trip and fall and break his stupid neck. Yeah. Well, obviously, we are in a place where he needs to be replaced. But will it happen? Who knows? Joe Biden's wife is running the country. Who voted for this? I would say that also the crackhead in chief is also helping to run the country into the ground meaning hunter so we got the crackhead and the crack pot i guess again all disrespect intended don't be fooled joe isn't stepping down it's hard to imagine a presidential debate more triumphant than the one we saw last thursday night or if you're a democrat one more miserable in the immediate hours after the debate a chorus erupted on TV and online from the supposed opinion makers of the liberal ruling class. Biden must step aside, they said. Yeah, so here's all the people coming out 
and pretending like they didn't already know. Uh huh. Politico, yeah. So all of the all the leftists out there just pretending like we had no idea. San Diego judge to Antifa. So this article is actually pretty good news, I think. So San Diego judge to Antifa, quote, I don't have any question this organization exists. Then he tossed them all in jail. Uh huh. After a three year long investigation, justice seekers in San Diego finally did what nobody else has managed to do. Again, this is San Diego, by the way. That's like California, last time I checked. They broke up a powerful Antifa cell and put them behind bars where they belong. As for the judge in the case, early on, he didn't think the prosecutors would be able to prove that this was an organized, quote, terror cell, but by the end, he didn't have a doubt. He believed 100% that Antifa as an organization exists finally. So, this is from Andy Ingo, or however you say his name, he's a... Um, a guy that's been reporting on Antifa for a long time. After three plus years of investigation, uh, San Diego District Attorney prosecutors dismantled an Antifa cell for the first time anywhere in the U.S. All 12 Southern California Antifa members were convicted. At sentencing, the remaining were all sent to prison or jail. So how about that? It says, however, if you ask Joe Biden or any Democrat about the greatest domestic threat to America, they'll point straight at the nonviolent Trump supporters who supposedly tried to overthrow the U.S. government with nothing but water bottles and fanny packs on January 6th. It's a peculiar stance, especially considering Biden himself loves to mock American gun owners. He claims that taking on the U.S. government with an AR-15 is for silly fools. Apparently, we'd need F-15s to stand a chance. And there's the clip, if you don't believe me or have never heard that. He does say that. But apparently, you can overtake the government with a bottle of Aquafina. Who knew? However, one group of Dems never labeled as a domestic threat is Antifa, the far-left extremists, extremists who meld seamlessly into all sorts of progressive movements from Occupy Wall Street and BLM to climate nuts and the anti-Trump Marxists who set fire to D.C. the day Trump was inaugurated. The media wouldn't admit it, but this is Antifa. And then, of course, we've got videos here where they have the mostly peaceful protesting, where they're burning down the city. It's mostly peaceful, though. We all know that. So, anyway, it's interesting, though, that in San Diego, these guys from Antifa were jailed. So, wow. More power to them, I think. Not them, but the judge who took care of it. So, this is another one of those uh, leftist type of... Um, Websites slash newspaper magazine things. Democrats fear years of work in rural America erased by the debate. Quote, I think people just feel lied to, end quote, said one local rural Democrat party chair in a battleground district. That says it all. I think people just feel lied to. They've been lied to forever, going back to the beginning. It's just gotten worse. So anyway, that's on uh, Politico. We'll link to all these articles in the Substack post that I send out uh, on Tuesday. So make sure you're on that list. The link's in the upper right corner up there, diamonddisk.substack.com. You guys know the uh, you guys know the link. All right, I thought I'd bring up Drudge Report just because I thought it was so obvious here. France election shock. Left wins big! Exclamation point. Le Pen and uh, this other person here, who are on the right. So many people, like myself, believe that Matt Drudge is probably sitting on a on a beach somewhere. Um, that this is simply just using his name because he would never have put out headlines like this way back when, several years back. But um, obviously, Drudge Report has become a, a, a leftist rag um like so many others out there but um it is interesting here that they're so excited that the left wins big when le pen was projected to win obviously in in uh, france there's other articles here linked to about um biden exiting the race and so forth so feel free to look at that if you guys want com is where that is 
I don't usually look at it, but I thought it was kind of interesting that they had the left and the exclamation part, exclamation mark there on the site. All right, so Zero Hedge, just look at some of the headlines. The Shiite is going to hit the fan on Monday, meaning tomorrow. D.C. in turmoil, as Biden says, only an act of God will dislodge him. An act of God. What could that be? And which God is he talking about? The Shiite is going to hit the fan tomorrow, so we'll see. Leftist coalition set for shock victory in French election. Le Pen limps to third behind Macron. Um, election meddling much. Rigged elections much. Le Pen was way ahead, and I think they're even burning down the city at this point. We'll look at that here in a minute. Californians will decide on minimum wage, rent control, slavery, and more in November. We're going to decide on slavery. Overlapping emergencies pushes countries to bolster food supply stocks. And much more. This is on um, Zero Hedge. So it's just the homepage there, so feel free to look at that if any of those sound interesting. Discern Report, same kind of thing. Just look at the headlines here. France's left pulls off shocking comeback, finishing first in parliamentary elections, which is what we just mentioned from the Judge Report a minute ago. Radio host who exposed Biden's scripted questions is fired because they probably felt like they had to. Of course, they're probably going to give her a promotion, though, in some other way. So we'll see. Write her a big fat, fat check from the um, Biden-Harris um, coffers, you know. New York City luxury hotels pocket a billion dollars to house illegals at taxpayers' expense. Biden's White House officially, uh, Biden's White House physician allegedly tied to families' business deals. So that's nice. China set to release killer robots into battle within two years. And note that they are uh, helping out Belarus already, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show. Fox News's Bream calls out Dems for refusing to appear to defend Biden on air. Yep, so they do. There are MAGA candidates up for election in Florida challenging the rhinos. Why it's important. So that and much more over on discernreport.com. So let's see. The next article here is Blinken refuse. Blinken reveals government's AI plan to censor free speech. Secretary of State Blinken is a member of the Trilateral Commission and is gleeful for the gift of AI to crush free speech once and for all. Their quest started in, in 1981 when they crushed Anthony Sutton's academic career in our scholarly books, Trilaterals Over Washington, Volumes 1 and 2. This is uh, Patrick Wood talking here. Tri Trilateral David Rockefeller later bragged how they deceived the world. Yeah, now they got AI to help them do such things. Let's see, Klaus Schwab, we must force humanity into collaboration. Force humanity. So says this other unelected bureaucrat. This is technocracy, which is defined in the Technocrat magazine in 1937. There will be no place for politics, politicians, finance or financiers, rackets or racketeers. Technocracy will distribute by means of a certificate of distribution available to every citizen from birth to death. All right, so those are the top headlines on technocracy.news. Reclaimthenet.org. Rise in stolen Singaporean ID data shows the dangers of digital ID. Sensitive biometric data biometric data of Singaporeans sold on the dark web amid significant increase in cyber criminal activity. Of course it is. To be expected. Meta defends charging users for privacy. Hmm. Critics argue the proposal violates users' rights to consent and data privacy. So way to go, Facebook. Mississippi's age verification Digital ID law is declared unconstitutional, a First Amendment violation. Former FBI and Twitter lawyer Jim Baker joins Election Task Force advocating for social media censorship. Of course he does. First Amendment and AI, reading between the lines of the Supreme Court's latest social media ruling. Supreme Court is hinting at how it sees the First Amendment as it relates to foreign companies and AI. 
Advertiser Alliance members are called to testify after allegations of efforts to demonetize and censor disfavored viewpoints. Lawmakers suspect the Alliance's brand safety measures might mask a bias. Australia's chief censor to force online digital ID within six months. Critics argue the move could destroy online anonymity and compromise physical safety under various regimes. <laughs> I think that's the whole point. Because they plan on being the regime forever and they're only going after their political enemies. Which is anyone who disagrees with them. Again, reclaimthenet.org is where that is. The Liberty Beacon, President Biden, fake President Biden, must resign or be impeached. Um, I doubt it. Have they looked at who is running the Senate and the rhinos in Congress in general? We'll make sure that never happens. As far as impeaching him and removing him, at least. So, some pretty good articles on the Liberty Beacon. If you want to check that out, the LibertyBeacon.com. Good site. Ukraine asks the West for submarines. The vessels would help Kiev expand its capabilities through the Black Sea, the Navy chief claims. So now they want subs. Again, keeping in mind that Zelensky isn't even officially the president anymore. So they must just be under martial law permanently. That's why they want the war to go on forever, because then he can be president forever. So we can start calling him fake President Zelensky because he's no longer the president. He's not duly elected. He's just assumed control, like Hitler might have. Le Pen's party falls short of historic milestone in French election, just like she did last time, just like she did every time she goes up against the globalists. So, yep, French election results trigger riots. So what I alluded to a minute ago. Turmoil erupted after the left-wing New Popular Front Coalition emerged victorious. And shocker of all shocks. And I'm guessing if there is an election in the U.S. in November, the same thing will happen. Just a guess. The left will come out on top. No matter who's in there. It doesn't matter if it's Biden or Biden's corpse or Hillary or Big Mike or... Obama again, or whoever it is. Or Kamala. I mean, it could be anybody. It says, riots, clashes, and looting broke out across France as left-wing supporters, the people who won, flooded the streets to celebrate. So they win, and they go burn down everything. So there you go. They're celebrating. So let them do it, I guess. The victory over the right-wing national rally and President Macron his centrists on Sunday. Over 30,000 riot police officers and including 5,000 in Paris alone were deployed across France to prevent violence. It didn't sound like it worked. As political tensions rose ahead of the election showdown between the right and the left. So you think something like this will happen in November if there's any election? If we're not already at World War III by then? I don't know. So they're out there celebrating winning by destroying everything. Sounds a lot like Antifa. Putin endorsed Le Pen. So there you go. Russiagate comes to France. Oh. I wonder if uh, Hillary's working against Le Pen, too. Russiagate. If you thought the Western establishment was done shifting blame for its own fiascos, think again. So this is on RT.com, just like the last article was. The last two, actually. So this is about... Um, Putin and um, his endorsement of Le Pen going back a ways here. So that one's available again on RT.com. Biden campaign plans advertising blitz amid concern for his health. Well, he just stated in the last day or so that his health is fine. It's just his brain. He literally said that. My health is fine. It's just my brain. It says... Fake President Biden's re-election campaign on Friday said it would spend $50 million on campaign ads in battleground states. The campaign said it had $240 million on hand in July, up from $212 million last month. The President, First Lady Jill, and VP Kamala, and Second Gentleman Doug Emhoff, 
plan to visit every battleground state in the coming weeks, the campaign said. The Blitz will continue online radio and TV ads, the campaign said. Does the, did the campaign address concerns over Biden's mental acuity? That's putting it very nicely. Campaign noted that Biden would sit down for a one-on-one -on -one interview with George Stephanopoulos, which that did not go well, by the way. ABC News anchor was an advertiser for former President Clinton, and the interview will follow Biden's poor performance in last week's debate with Trump. So this is on um, the, sh the SIFT, which is part of WNG, WNG.org. All right, and then headlines from the People's Voice. LGBTQ plus leaders sign WEF treaty to accept pedophiles as legally protected minority and also le legally favorited minority by the globalists and so forth. CNN insiders admit Biden sent them questions to ask before the interview. I doubt that he did it. He doesn't even know what planet he's on. Uh, CDC warns of imminent plague pandemic. So the Center for Disease Creation says there's an imminent plague coming. So beware. I know you're scared. Terrified. You're supposed to be. So just remember. Mississippi's online censorship rules declared unconstitutional. So that's interesting. Dutch couple euthanized for having sore backs. So they killed a Dutch couple because they had some sore backs. Mm -hmm. Yep. UK's new PM assures Zelensky of Britain's unshakable support. So this is the new guy that replaced Rishi Sunak. Minister, Prime Minister Sir Kier Starmer. The new guy. I'm sort of surprised they uh, brought in a white guy as a PM. I mean, what were they thinking? Obviously, he's compromised, or he wouldn't be there. Scientists warn popular tampon brands, and I know you're probably thinking the same thing I am, Justin Trudeau, contain dangerous levels of arsenic and lead. So, Justin Trudeau contains dangerous levels of arsenic and lead. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. So, that's not really that surprising. He also contains dangerous levels of communism. Information liberation is Israel killed their own under Hannibal Directive on October 7th. Israeli media admits. Israel killed many of their own people under the Hannibal Directive. I like how they call it the Hannibal Directive. On October 7th, the Israeli media outlet Haaretz admitted Sunday after eight months of cover-ups and disinformation. On the 12th of October last year, in the first episode since the horrors of the October 7th attacks in Israel, I asked the question, how was this allowed to happen? Because it was allowed to happen. The most heavily sophisticated border fence and technologically equipped border guards are not simply blindsided and overrun by tractors and paragliders. It's akin to hijackers with bolt cutters on 9-11, the door was clearly left ajar. Now, pointing out this obviousness way back in October got you called names by the emotionally charged keyboard warriors who could finally slag off Muslims while appearing to be virtuous. The BBC and Sky News rolled out Israeli spokespeople, all with perfect British or American accents, to dismiss the idea that Israel knew the attack was coming and did nothing to stop it despite the Egyptians saying they'd warned Israel and the Americans confirming those claims. The media, as you would expect, hardly touched the story, instead focusing on parroting the fabricated portions of the October 7th story. Israeli soldiers that worked on the border fence were shhed as they themselves pointed out the absurdity of the surprise border breach. We knew if there was a cockroach near the fence, said one former border guard, yet they didn't see tractors rumbling towards them. Mm. It's been eight months of continued horror since October the 7th, and while condemnation against Israel across the world is growing, focus on what really happened to start the whole thing has waned till this week. The Jerusalem Post ran a story on the 17th of June stating that the IDF, Israeli Defense Forces, 
knew the attack was imminent at least three weeks before it happened. A document titled Detailed End-to-End -end Raid Training was distributed on September the 19th, 2023 and described in detail the series of exercises conducted by Hamas elite units. These exercises detailed a plan to storm the border, attack villages before taking 250 hostages back to Gaza. Now, officials say that over 200 hostages were taken. So this warning document was pretty accurate, clearly legit. But what was done? The same as what was done with the Egyptian warnings. Absolutely nothing. In fact, less than nothing as the border was left exposed and the villages closest to the fence received no IDF assistance for hours as the attack took place. I would suggest this attack was allowed to happen to manufacture consent for what came next. Israel has all but destroyed Gaza, a land they've always wanted, taking over almost all of it and killing nearly 40,000 Palestinians. Countless others have fled, and like the 750,000 Palestinians that fled their homes during the Nakba of 1948, they will not be allowed to return. Now, even the country that does what it wants when it wants can't simply do that without excuse, but they got their excuse, and boy, did they use it. It's worth remembering that in 2014, Israel killed well over 2,000 Palestinians, including over 500 children, when three Israeli teenagers were taken. So the response to October the 7th was always going to be extreme. You see, there are three ways to manufacture the consent to get what you want. Israel wants Gaza. Israel wants the West Bank. It wants the Palestinians gone. Their leaders make no secret of that. But in order to get that, you need a reason. A way of doing something very, very bad while still maintaining that you have the moral justification for your actions. Now, you can simply do it yourself and blame someone else. You can do it by using propaganda to make people believe it's happened and that your response is reasonable. See bodies dropping dead in the street in Wuhan. Or you can remove the barriers that are in place to prevent it from happening. I don't need to rob my own house to try and defraud the insurance company when I can simply leave the door open. Sooner or later, my house is getting robbed. And that's even more likely if I've already been handed an intelligence document telling me that the lad across the road is planning on robbing my house. See how it works. The truth always comes out in the end. It might take some time, but it does come. And this document seems to be another crack in the official narrative dam. But be sure that as these cracks appear, bills will be passed and editorial rules put in place to make questioning the official narrative illegal. As early as January this year, the Times of Israel was already conflating asking questions about October 7th with Holocaust denial, which is of course already illegal in many countries. To add more weight to the claim Israel knew what was coming, their highest court has now issued a halt in the investigation into the events of October the 7th, because nothing says we've got nothing to hide, quite like saying, don't look over there. Now, many will think the idea the Israeli government would allow this to happen to their own people is too far-fetched, forgetting, of course, the fact that they treated Israelis as lab rats for Pfizer in 2021. So I asked those people this. Do you think Rishi Sunak cares about you? Do you think Joe Biden cares about you? And of course you don't. So what makes you think Netanyahu cares about Israelis? All right. That was pretty good uh, info there. That was Gareth Ike, if you didn't know already know, who has been a, um, a guest on Lost Arts Radio a couple times. I've talked to him, and uh, I think his, his take on that subject matter was really good. And you guys know where I stand, I think, on the whole Israel thing, Israel-Gaza. Uh, another article on information liberation. New York Times is saying, Biden told Netanyahu, if you launch a big attack on Iran, on Iran, you're on your own. So, that's what he says. Of course, again, he doesn't know what planet he's on, so who knows. I'm thinking that um, whatever Israel does, the U.S. will probably help. Just a guess. GOP uses powers to leak Columbia admins' private messages mocking privileged Jewish students. Hmm. ADL sues Iran, Syria, and North Korea to in bid to tap the U.S. victims of state-sponsored terrorism fund. Pretty handy. 
IDF soldiers use use Palestinians as human shields, exploration drones. So lots of stuff on here about um, what's going on in Israel and Gaza and the war against Hamas. But it's just a one-sided war, I think. There's no uh, troops in um, military equipment on the other side, I don't think. At least very little. Where's the other side's tanks? I don't know. And they're saying 40,000 dead now. I think that's the official slash unofficial number. But I heard at one point there was over a million people missing. So where did they go? So I'm, I'm guessing that we're going to hear that those numbers of 40,000 are probably way low. All right, you guys remember the monoliths? No, not the monoliths in the, um, the famous uh, 2001 Space Odyssey films. Not that, not that at all. Mysterious monolith appears on a hiking trail near Las Vegas. So, Emily, this one's for you. You got to go find this. Take a picture of it for us. Sparking wild speculation about where it came from. The mirrored monolith was found near Gas Peak. Close to downtown Vegas. It was found by the Las Vegas Metro Search and Rescue. So it looks like a mirror though. I wonder if they were just walking along and like headbutted right into it. Like a like a pole on a sidewalk. People are on their cell phones and walking along, you know, and have their head down. And just smash into a uh, light pole or something. It kind of looks like that. It reminds me of it. How would you see it? Mysterious metal monolith has appeared on a hiking trail near Las Vegas, leaving officials baffled, they're always baffled, as to how it got there. The mirrored monolith was found <clears throat> near Gas Peak, about 25 miles from Vegas. Says the police department officials confirmed the object was found on the popular hiking trail last weekend. Posting about it on Facebook, along with some images, they wrote, We see a lot of weird things when people go hiking. Um, like not being prepared for the weather, not bringing enough water, but check this out. The post quickly garnered more than a thousand likes and hundreds of comments. Yeah, there it is. There's the monolith. So this happened, though, um, before. That's kind of what I was looking for. When was that? Steel-shaped monolith, shaped like a giant Toblerone bar. <laughs> it's been spotted near Hay on Wye in, the, in Wales. So another one was was found in Wales. So these things are just mysteriously appearing, metal things uh, that don't seem to have any, you know, traces or, or tracks in or out or whatever. They just show up. I don't know if you guys remember. That happened a few years ago as well. Um, so one happened in Wales. I guess that's the only two that are, are mentioned here in this article at least. So pretty weird. Very strange. Very mysterious. Anyway, I just thought you want to know about the um, crazy monoliths just showing up out of nowhere. Alright, the rise of the beasts for 42 months in Times Burien, website I've mentioned many times, or well, quite a few times. This is uh, Dr. Christian Widener. So, um, let's see here. Is the beast with seven heads and ten hordes already here? I hope that you are ready for another rethink about things we have all come to know and, as and to assume. But when you get right down to it, some of the things we are sure and definite may be built on assumptions and are not quite right. This time I want to talk about the 42-month reign of the Antichrist with the beast with seven heads and ten horns. The things I am proposing in an update come from applying the overall lens of the decree of Suleiman, which establishes a seven-year window that was confirmed by the massive shift the world has clearly experienced beginning with the coronavirus pandemic in 2020. If the world were not on fire right now in so many different ways, I might be rethinking the significance of the decrees, but because of all these signs that they're present and are only increasing, I thought perhaps once again there might be there may be some things that we have incorrectly assumed that are preventing us from recognizing what's happening before our eyes. Alright, so number one, the beast is symbolic. So I'm just going to, this is really the first time I've looked at this article, so we're just going to scroll through here and look at the numbers and just see, uh, see what it says. Number two, the beast represents the last world empire, which is different than all the others. 
We read the last kingdom represented by the terrible beast is different from all other kingdoms and it will subdue the whole earth. Hmm, like maybe that's the world government. Klaus Schwab and Prince Charles on why we need a great reset. Listen to the podcast. So there he is with the red cheeks. I think that means that he's been drinking. You guys ever heard that? I don't know. <laughs> that's kind of an older picture. But anyways... You guys know what I think about Charles. Um, then he's saying perhaps by 2027. So he's 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 slowly coming into the the fold here of um, yeah we're probably in the end times, but how far are we into it? Looks like three. Satan is Satan as the seven headed red dragon is the ultimate power and coordinator of of this seven headed beast monstrosity from the sea. Okay. Number four, the beast's reign may not be what we expect. Again, there's a lot here. There's a, a Craig Bong video here from Janie Duval's channel. Uh, number five, there are still mysteries, though. Who is the woman who rides the beast? And one of the heads will be wounded. Little Horn speaks great boasts, the man of lawlessness who sets himself up in God's temple. So all stuff that we've uh, heard so much recently. At least I have. I don't know if you guys have as well, but probably you have. So it's a pretty lengthy article. might be worth a read. Endtimesberean.com is where it is. And um, it was posted a few days ago, June 21st. Certainly worth a look, I think. So feel free to check that out if you guys want. Definitely think we're in the end times. Uh, if you don't know, I've already, you know, done a video series, a 15-part video series on my channel. On um, Well, it's on the Rumble channel as well, but YouTube and Rumble and BitChute and Brighteon. It's on all those places, um, the Diamond Disc channel on those those places. On YouTube, though, it's called End Times Dates. Take it to the Lord in Prayer, End Times Dates. So if you've missed the video series I would encourage you to take a look at that especially part one just to kind of get a feel for it but um, in that I uh, posit that Jesus will return in 2028 September 2028 and which if that's the case then the final seven years started in September 2021 so that's how far into it we are which basically puts us at the uh, the final three and a half years which will start early next year 2025. So that's kind of in a nutshell what I've what I've uh, put forth in the video series. So if you're interested in that, feel free to take a look. And uh, one thing that happened while I was out for a couple weeks, uh, helping my mom do some different things in Indiana. Uh, guess who was released? Julian Assange. So imagine that. Forget Russia. The real threat to America comes from Israel and the Israel lobby. Truer words have not been spoken. Oh, look, it's 11-11. So, interesting meme, huh? Yeah, I found that um, earlier today and thought it was worth showing you guys. AI plus gene editing promises to shift biotech into high gear. During her chemistry Nobel Prize lecture in 2018... Francis Arnold said, Today we can, for all practical purposes, read, write, and edit any sequence of DNA, but we cannot compose it. That isn't true anymore. This is on Singularity Hub. So, yeah, quite the, uh, quite the amount of, um, you know, braggadocious spirit here, isn't it? Since then, science and technology have progressed so much that artificial intelligence has learned to compose DNA. So AI is composing DNA now. And with genetically modified bacteria, scientists are on their way to designing and making bespoke proteins. The goal is that with AI's design talents and gene editing's engineering abilities, scientists can modify bacteria to act as many factories, producing new proteins that can reduce greenhouse gases, digest plastics, or act as species-specific pesticides. And they forgot, comma, and kill all of humanity. They forgot that one in there. 
as a chemistry professor and computational chemist who studies molecular science and environmental chemistry, I believe that advances in AI and gene editing make this a realistic possibility, and she's all for it. Gene sequencing, reading life's recipes. I say, leave it alone. It's God's design. You don't need to be meddling with it, you meddling kids. Anyway, that's on Singularity Hub. And they pretty much, I think it's safe to assume here that, that, they, that they believe science is God on Singularity Hub, from what I can tell. Maybe I'm wrong. All right, they hear, I mentioned this a little, a little while ago toward the beginning of the broadcast. Pyongyang says it will send troops to Ukraine within a month. So there's Rocket Man. June 19th defense pact just signed between Russia and North Korea included a promise to provide military assistance to one another. Within days, Pyongyang said, that's a city, I don't think it can talk, said it was sending troops to Ukraine. So Rocket Man's going to send some send some people to help Putin, I guess. According to um, Kiev Post, kievpost.com, Ukraine's global voice. I don't know exactly how I found that, but there it is, if you're interested. And uh, into the American Dream, this is uh, Michael Snyder's site, and um, blog, it says the sign of the devil has appeared in New York City. There it is. Looks a lot like a dragon. It says uh, sometimes people who do things that have extreme spiritual significance without even realizing it. When I watched Jonathan Kahn's latest video on Tuesday, I knew that I had to write about what just happened in New York City. From June 16th through June 19th, a 270-foot dragon was wrapped around the Empire State Building. In addition, giant banners that featured dragons with the ominous message, All Must Choose, were draped over iconic landmarks all over the Big Apple. And restaurants throughout the city were featured, featuring dragon-themed menu items. All of this was being done to promote the second season of House of the Dragon, and those behind this campaign probably did not intend to deliver any sort of spiritual message. Ah, uh, yes, but that doesn't matter, because one was delivered anyway. But as Khan correctly observed in his new video, there are times when people do things that are highly symbolic without even understanding the true significance of their actions. Such as having the last name Khan, I would add. Uh, in Revelation chapter 12, Satan is identified as the devil, the dragon, and the great dragon. In Revelation chapter 20, Satan is once again identified as the devil and the dragon. Considering what the Bible has to say, should we be alarmed that a colossal dragon was just perched atop the Empire State Building? In the middle of this month, a gigantic 270-foot dragon was literally coiled around the upper portion of, the, of New York's most famous skyscraper. It took an enormous effort to pull this off, and the scale of the project was absolutely immense. It was a very impressive promotional stunt, but those behind, but those behind it also sent a very powerful spiritual message without even realizing it. New York is the financial center of our nation. Without the stock exchange and the financial institutions that are based in the Big Apple, we wouldn't even have a functioning economy, which is why I think New York City is, this is me talking, which is why I think New York City is the Babylon of Revelation 18. Not the entire United States, but New York City in particular. And you could probably even throw in the East Coast, meaning Washington, D.C., and New York City, and perhaps Boston and some of the other cities there as well. Super evil. Not everyone in, the, in every city, I don't mean that. But much evil comes out of those places. Especially D.C. and especially New York City. And um, we're describing an uh, interesting thing happening here in New York at this, at this time. It says, uh, the entire city is absolutely saturated with evil. In addition to the giant dragon on the Empire State Building, massive banners featuring enormous dragons with the message, All Must Choose, were hung on New York's Stock Exchange, Manhattan Bridge, Penn Station, City Field, Rockefeller Center, and Brooklyn Bridge, Grand Central Station, and in Washington Square Park. We've never seen anything quite like this before. On top of everything else, restaurants all over the city were selling show-branded menu items to their customers. 
So it has to do with this show called House of Dragons. So, needless to say, these unprecedented promotional efforts got a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they probably most most New Yorkers probably just figured it was funny and oh look at us, haha! Ha, we're we're so cool. We're helping Hollywood take part in a promotional effort. Blah blah blah. Just a guess. That's probably what most people in that area were thinking. They don't see past the obvious stuff that's right in your face. Interesting, this all happened in the year of the dragon, according to the Chinese calendar. Is that just some sort of bizarre coincidence? We live at a time when the battle between good and evil is building up to a grand crescendo, and the events that are talked about in the book of Revelation are starting to take place right in front of our eyes. So, was it just an accident that iconic locations all over the planet were just taken over by dragons and all must choose? Was the primary slogan of the campaign? The Bible does speak of a time in the future when the Antichrist uh, will take authority over our planet and when that day arrives, everyone will be forced to make a choice, i.e. Mark of the Beast and so forth. Those that submit to the Antichrist will, and take the Mark of the Beast will be allowed to live and those that refuse will be put to death. Whether those behind this promotional campaign realize it or not, the truth is that they just foreshadowed a choice that billions of people will be faced with someday. I say, it may have already happened. At least to some degree. But there's more coming. More coming. I believe the Antichrist reign will start early next year. As I mentioned already. So, but this is on endoftheamericandream.com. That's where this is. And, um... This is the New York Post article with a few pictures and video here. You can see the serpent's head right here, the dragon's head. Giant in, dragon inflatable, sp, giant inflatable dragon. I guess they got the words backwards. Giant dragon spotted on the Empire State Building for latest House of the Dragon marketing stunt. And you can see it here. Here it is wrapped around the uh, top of the Empire State Building. Its head is down here. It looks a, a little weird. This is its wing here and here and its head going down the middle here it's a little hard to see let me play this video and see if um, I'm going to mute it Let's see if we can tell anything by it I don't know if they zoom in yeah they zoom in a little yeah you can see it but you can see the wings over here on the sides and its head in the middle pointed downwards so yep pretty evil if you ask me that's on uh, New York Post is where that is. And again, we'll link to all these articles in the uh, Substack post. So be on that list if you're not already. FEMA camps for American dissidents. Um, now this is a Reese report. And um, I do have that video queued up here, but I don't think I'll show it just for time's sake. Um, but you guys can find it, you, you know, where to find Greg's stuff. You can find his uh, Substack, gregreese.substack.com. The video is right here. FEMA cap. FEMA camps for American dissidents, the U.S. has a long history of prison camps. So, quite a bit of info here, and um, a lot of this is the um, the verbiage in the actual video. So, have a look at that if you haven't already. You can also find his channel on band.video. So, it's pretty interesting. And then Joe Biden's big moment, defiantly announcing he's staying in the race. He says, I'll beat Donald Trump. I'll beat him again in 2020. So, Dementia Joe is going to go back in time and beat Trump again in 2020. And along those lines, I saw this. Many of you guys who are uh, friends on Facebook and um, in the band group would have seen this already. But, I will beat Donald Reagan this September. You can take that to the post office. Yep. I mean, that kind of sums it up. All right, I found this one too, kind of interesting. News, opinions, questions website. Civil unrest is the next most predictable crisis for America now. For the past six months, this person's been writing about the clear uptick in civil war rhetoric within the establishment media in the U.S., the regime media, I would call them. And we all know that the 
coming presidential election is the reason for it. The bottom line is, no matter who ends up in the White House in 2025, there will be mass violence, but most of this violence will be reserved for the possibility of Trump's return. Yeah, and they're going to try and wait, hold off, and crash the economy as, as soon as he gets in, too, if he gets in. So he can be blamed for it. As we have seen in Europe, mainly France, any perceived shift towards conservative influence in government will undoubtedly result in riots from the left. Yeah, but they just won in France and they're still rioting. The media has so infected the minds of progressives that they truly believe conservatives intend to, quote, end democracy and launch an era of fascism, even though they are the actual fascists. So in their view, all violence against conservatives and even moderates is justified. Of course, their aggression and hysteria is only inspiring conservatives to respond with aggression in kind. This is where the potential for civil conflict arises. One side says only they are exalted enough to be allowed to dictate policy and law, and that side's ideology embraces moral relativism. So you can see where this is where this thing is headed. People are eventually going to fight back. They have no choice. In the meantime, I suspect rioting and looting America dealt with in 2020 will be cakewalk in comparison to what we're going to see into November 2024 and beyond. Leftists claim they are, quote, protecting democracy. But you will see very quickly that as soon as democracy doesn't go their way, they will abandon it in a heartbeat and try to win using other methods. This means potential supply chain disruptions in major cities as well as no-go areas in many retail districts. Sure, you might be able to get into a neighborhood to shop, but will you be able to leave? And will those suppliers even have any goods on, hands, on hand? Or will the stores be turned into empty husks? Well, yeah, they're not prosecuting the um, shoplifters in a lot of the large cities now. One rising trend that should have all business owners and preppers on alert is the use of social media apps to coordinate seemingly spontaneous looting events, which is what I was just talking about. These events can be organized within hours, encouraging some of the worst people to congregate and strike a business block without ever meeting each other before. What I worry about is that these methods will expand beyond chain stores and local government buildings. Travel routes will come under threat. Freight could be targeted. We may even see looters and rioters move into residential areas further away from the city center. Supply chain issues will surely arise. And the very least of these will be concerns among freight drivers that they are taking a risk carrying truckloads of valuable resources into places where they could be surrounded by an angry mob and hijacked or worse. Large-scale crime in general is bad for the economy, and we've witnessed in cities like Chicago and San Francisco unchecked crime forces companies to move out of a region and leave those places barren. They call it a food desert, where tens of thousands of people have no access to groceries or retail goods without traveling much further than usual. Looting and rioting are, are an accelerated version of this scenario. Once stores are looted or burned, they may never try and rebuild. Necessities like long-term food storage are an obvious solution. So, they're saying to go get prepped if you're not already. So, and there's quite a bit more here. If you guys want to check out this article, I thought it was kind of interesting. N-O-Q, N-O-Q report.com. All right, let's see here. We are making our way through the Headlines and tabs I've got open here. I've got the natural news site pulled up. I don't think I had anything in particular, so just take a look at some of the headlines. Um, Bill Gates launches maggot milk to replace dairy products. <laughs> he looks so thrilled. Obviously a cartoon of him, but uh, pretty accurate. Actress Leah Delaria calls on Biden to assassinate Trump. Wow. And it goes on and on. There's quite a bit here. Naturalnews.com. LeoHoman.com. When you don't feel like celebrating, I don't know if you were like me. Well, I was pretty busy on the 4th of July, but I definitely thought about stuff like this. Millions of Americans will celebrate today, meaning the 4th, with fireworks, food, and family. Flags will wave. Drums roll. Trumpets blare. But what are we really celebrating when we're, really, when we're being real with ourselves? I don't sense any of that. We're told about America and its, quote, freedom is real. 
I feel like our independence has been stripped away by the lures of convenience and promises of safety and security through mesmerizing technology. So true. The very concept of freedom is no longer seen as an inalienable right endowed by our Creator. Well said. That's uh, leohoman.com. Globalist frontman Klaus Schwab tells elitist followers they must force humanity into a world ruled by AI and other dehumanizing technologies. He's all for it. Video Tucker Carlson unleashes truth bomb about satanic warmongering Washington Uniparty. Just kind of reading the headlines here. You guys can check this out if you want. U.S. Supreme Court says it's okay for federal government to outsource online censorship to big tech, curtailing free speech of all Americans. They say it's totally fine. And the articles after that I have mentioned before on this program. Wine Press News. Look at a few of the uh, headlines here. Blinken says U.S. is working with new AI tools to combat disinformation, which means censor everybody who's saying anything that they disagree with. <clears throat> Tyson Foods, who reintroduced antibiotics in their beef a year after backtracking on antibiotic-free poultry. Target will no longer accept personal checks as payment. So if you're used to going into Target and writing a check, which most people probably don't, they're going to shut it off. Europe mandates speed limiters on all new vehicles. Speed limiters. So you won't be able to go over whatever speed they have set. And by the way, that will probably be a moving target, depending on where you are. Um, a satellite or a 5G tower nearby um, will most likely be communicating with your car, and depending on where you are, will keep you from accelerating beyond a certain speed. It's my guess. So it's far worse than what they're saying here. Scientists claim to have discovered alien megastructures called Dyson spheres. Hmm. I don't think that's vacuum cleaners. I think that's something else. Google's jigsaw to widen use of AI models to combat online toxicity and bolster censorship. Yep. Definitely see a uh, pattern there repeating. Michigan adopts strongest laws in the U.S. on police use of facial recognition. Police state British schoolboy school reported to counter-extremist officers by school for claiming there are only two genders. How dare him? How dare him be the only one that understands what's really going on? He's going to be punished for it. Huawei introduces 5.5G technology. Augmented reality, automation, and AI advanced. Sounds fun. Japan breaks internet speed record by hitting 402 terabytes per second. So you can download large files in a millisecond. Wow. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, let's see. Oklahoma mandates that public schools must use the Bible in classrooms, but allows... Satanic Temple to teach courses in class also. So all the above, I guess, they say. Everything's fine. Bill Gates invests millions into startup that makes vaccines to stop cow farts. We mentioned that uh, several weeks back, actually. World Bank upgrades Russia's economy to high-income status in de defiance to thousands of sanctions, and Chick-fil-A deploys autonomous delivery bots. Chick-fil-A. So that's interesting. So they have the Chick-fil-A robot delivering your sandwich. Anyway, there's other headlines over here on winepressnews.com. Pretty good site. Got a few Gateway Pundit headlines pulled up here. National Embarrassment Biden campaign to stop feeding questions to media after being exposed on live TV. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Because they can do it. It's okay if they do it. And then... Truthofmedia.com Got some new videos out on their site. Again, this is uh, Ben Swan's site. Um, letters from a Ukrainian prison. Um, more of the Zelensky Unmasked Zelensky Unmasked series. Gonzalo Lira's last words. Um, 
lessons from foreign aid to Ukraine. So there's quite a few videos here if you're interested in the whole uh, Zelensky unmasked thing. I mentioned that before on this show. I think it's pretty interesting. They, they do have some really good short videos. All right, activistpost.com. 9-11 hardcore. Hmm. New, new video captures suspected Saudi spy filming U.S. Capitol and National Monument. I guess right before 9-11 happened. Wow. GM to pay $146 million in penalties for emission violations on 5.9 5 million older vehicles. Hmm. There's the uh, Bill Gates maggot milk. Sounds so yummy. Um, he should be the first one to try it. My guess is he probably wouldn't like that too much. It's just for the rest of us, you see. ATF has resumed openly murdering Americans. Isn't that nice? So, activistpost.com has got some good articles. And then, not to be, Joe Biden takes a jab at Donald Trump. I'll beat him again in 2020. So, I mentioned that earlier. Going back in time. A manure truck rolled over in a Connecticut neighborhood spraying poo all over cars, homes, and yards. The story might be a bunch of Bruce Springsteen, but it's true. A manure truck rolled over in a Connecticut neighborhood after colliding with another vehicle in a tricky intersection, <laughs> leaving the surrounding area covered in poo. Literally a waterfall of brown, one homeowner said. So you can see the, tr the truck here. Wow. Hope the guy was all right. Not only did the collision cause a bunch of poo to go spraying out of the truck on impact, covering a home, a vehicle, trees, and everything else within range, but as the truck sat on the side, the manure began to flow out of the tank like that river at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Except it wasn't exactly chocolate. Could you imagine the resale value of that particular house? And car. Of course, the car will probably wash off. <laughs> Cleanup crew arrived shortly after the accident to remove the poo, and they even dug down about four inches below the lawn to be sure that they got anything that might have seeped through the grass. Wow. Very interesting. As my grandpa would say, it smells like money, this person said. No, it smells like manure. Anyway, that's on not to be. Idaho City tried to, to ban crosses from the July 4th parade, so residents sent them a message. And here was their message. Everybody's got crosses. Christ is king. Banning crosses didn't work out so well for the Chamber of Commerce. So, that's in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Yeah. So good for them. At Miami International Airport, Spent the 4th of July cleaning up a mysterious fluorescent green liquid pouring from the ceilings. Um, yeah, it looks like the goo from um, Roger Rabbit. You can see him, the, the dude from Roger Rabbit melting down into the goo, the green goo. Yeah, here it is. <clears throat> it uh, just starts pouring out of the ceiling. And it looks like something out of Ghostbusters or something. It's weird. Or antifreeze, you suppose? I don't know what I don't know what it could be. Probably says in the article here. Let me look. Wow. Doesn't give you uh, much confidence in getting on the planes that are boarding into the particular airport at that point. Passengers passengers at Miami International were surprised to see neon green and yellow liquid pouring from the ceiling causing a stir. Airport officials have clarified that it was dyed water from the air conditioning system used to trace leaks. Well, I think they've definitely got a leak. wonder if it got on anybody. You can see what happened if it does. Yeah, let me off the plane. Let me off. Anyway, that was on not to be as well. And a few InfoWars articles here to just look at the headlines. Stunning video highlights Biden's cognitive decline in just the last four years. So, I thought we could watch this. It's pretty short. And let's see what you guys think. Nobody making less than $400,000 
will pay a penny more in tax under my proposal. That's a promise. That's a guarantee, a promise. I give you my word as a Biden. That's an absolute guarantee. And you think it's a good idea to raise taxes when the economy's in dire straits? Depending on who you're raising them on. Look, if you're raising somebody who's making a billion dollars a year, it's not a problem that they pay 39.6%, which everybody should pay, raise another $90 billion. Did you ever watch the debate afterwards? I don't think I did, no. Well, what, I'm trying, what I want to get at is what were you experiencing as you were going through the debate? Did you know how badly it was going? Yeah, look. The whole way I prepared, nobody's fault of mine. Nobody's fault of mine. I, uh, I prepared what I usually would do, sitting down, as I did come back with foreign leaders or the National Security Council, for explicit detail. And I realized about partway through that You know, all the, I get quoted, the New York Times had me down at 10 points before the debate, nine now or whatever the hell it is. The fact of the matter is that what I looked at is that he also lied 28 times. I couldn't, I mean, the way the debate ran. Okay. Well, yeah, a little bit of a difference. What a difference four years makes, I guess. But... Anyways, again, not surprising to the rest of the world, only to the people on the left. Rob Reiner turns on Biden, so you know it's bad when Re- when Rob Reiner is going against you, demands that he stop effing around and step down. Longtime Hollywood Biden supporter has finally had enough of the political humiliation joining other prominent, prominent Democrat lawmakers and media pundits calling for Biden to end his campaign. So, yeah, I mean, you know it's bad when he's when he's against you. HuffPo calls for Biden campaign to fool the public, fool the public with AI videos that make Sleepy Joe look younger and healthier. Mm-hmm. But his health is just fine. It's just his brain. That's what he said. AI can be used to polish how the president comes across, allowing voters to focus on his substance. No, you'd be allowing the voters to focus on AI's version of his substance, which is a lie. How many times have we heard voters and pundits alike gripe that Biden would be the perfect candidate if he were just 10 years younger? I've never heard one person ever say that. With modern technology, this exact deliverable is possible. Yes, but it's a lie. But you don't care. Again, it doesn't matter. They can do it. CNN's Dr. Gupta. Many doctors I spoke with pretty unanimously think Biden needs more testing. (laughs) More testing. They just don't know what's wrong with him. Healthy, gluten-free products laced with harmful substances, including gluten. So, there you go. (laughs) Gluten-free products contain significant quantities quantities of harmful substances and low concentrations of essential vitamins and minerals. Low concentrations. People with gluten intolerances may actually be making their condition worse by eating these products. So there you go for people who are having issues with gluten. This comes from Moms Across America, which is actually a really good, um, really good organization. We've we've had um, the Moms Across America founder on um, Lost Earth Radio before in the past, several years ago. Gluten-free products are laced with harmful substances including pesticides, glyphosate, and even gluten. According to a new report by nonprofit Moms Across America. So, anyway, Zen Honeycutt. That's the lady. The founder of Moms Across America. Founding director. So yeah, she definitely knows her stuff. She's very well, um, very well educated on this, on this whole thing. So they're doing doing good work. So look them up if you haven't already heard of them before. Moms Across America, good stuff. All right, and then let's see one more Infowars article: Communist takeover, leftist coalition set for shock victory in French election. Le Pen limps to third behind Macron, and I'm sure it was a fair and balanced election, just like they all are. Yeah, and if you believe that, yeah, well, no one saw that coming. The last minute arranged, the last minute arranged broad left-wing coalition known as the New Popular Front 
was leading a tight French legislative election Sunday ahead in, ahead of both Emmanuel Macron's centrist and Le Pen's rightists. Projected projections showed, and of course the left won, and then they proceeded to burn down the city. Makes sense to me. I mean, why wouldn't you burn down the city? Anyway, that's on Infowars. And then Modernity.News. Modernity.News. We have some pretty good uh, headlines and articles on here. I didn't have anything in particular pulled up on here. So I'll let you guys scroll through and look at that if you guys are so inclined. But um, he always has some interesting stuff to talk about. And really good videos, too. Paul Joseph Watson. And then vaccineimpact.com. Uh, let's see. We haven't covered any of these articles in a while, so I'll just read these headlines. You guys can check it out. Coal, God's gift to humanity for cheap energy or climate-destroying fossil fuel. Um, major July 24 events, Republican National Convention versus Sun Valley Conference for billionaires. Which one will shape the elections? That's a good question. What is true freedom? If the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. And then American Christians are biblically illiterate, not understanding the difference between the Old Covenant versus the New Covenant. Yeah. I find that to be very true. Is Trump's former CDC director working on a bird flu vax with Novavax COVID-19 vaccine manufacturer? Here's an article about honey. Honey supply being contaminated. 1948 State of Israel was not was not a fulfillment of prophecy. It was an ethnic cleansing massacre. So, <laughs> article on vaccine impact. Is a cyber pandemic in progress? Cyber attacks against car dealers and Federal Reserve put U.S. economy at the brink of failure. Iran's top attorney indicts Trump for murder in criminal court of Tehran. Well, I would imagine uh, what's-his-face in New York will probably see that and decide to in indict Trump for murder in New York now, too. Because how, I mean, you don't want to be one-upped by the folks in Tehran, after all. World War III escalation. Russia blames U.S. for terrorist attack on civilians using cluster bombs supplied to Ukraine. Yeah, well, that would be because the American Empire did do it. So those are all the articles on the main page here on Impact on vaccineimpact.com. And then on Dane's site this week, we had um, several broadcasts since our last um, time that we got together back on, what was it, June the 16th or something? Global Alert News, several different programs, June 22nd, June 29th, and July 6th. The July 6th one focusing on bracing for barrel. Again, the hurricane that's Fast approaching Texas. Meteorologists have never seen anything like Hurricane Barrel from Scientific American. Hurricane Barrel is the earliest Category 5 storm in recorded history from MSN. Dangerous, record-breaking heat expected to continue spreading across the U.S. from CBS News. Record-setting heat will continue to torment millions of Americans this weekend from CNN. Question, is Hurricane Barrel now scheduled to be utilized as a moisture pump to cool down portions of the superheating U.S.? Even in the far north, conditions are beyond alarming. So he's saying that they're going to use the moisture to ice nucleate and cool down the at least the eastern half of the U.S., it sounds like. It says, even the far north conditions are beyond alarming. Wildfi wildfires ravage Arctic Circle from MSN. Is firestorm smoke being used by the weather makers to temporarily, toxically, and very destructively block the sun from the rapidly melting polar ice? Are the climate engineers are the climate engineers truly this desperate? How long until impact? So Dane's show this week, we did not do any edits to it, so it's the same across all the different platforms, uh, Spotify, and then also YouTube and um, BitChute and um, Rumble. So, you can find Dane on those various platforms, and of course YouTube as well. That's the what that's the uh, video that's embedded here on this page, geoengineeringwatch.org. And then um, this is the uh, six to ten day temperature outlook. You can see 
It's all in the red, pretty much. At least most of it. Temps above normal. So yeah, July seven, July 13 to 17 is the outlook. So this is the scheduled weather. Pretty much red everywhere. And um, if you look at the precipitation outlook right here, keeping in mind the um, you know the hurricanes coming up through here, and the the um, moisture is going to be chemically ice nucleated most likely. And that's why they're showing above normal, I would imagine, on the eastern half of the U.S. because of that moisture coming from um, barrel. So we'll see what happens with the temperatures at that point, because it could be that they're uh, a cool off. There, there might be a cool off coming. Is what I'm saying on the eastern half of the U.S. if they chemically ice nucleate the moisture from barrel. So we'll see what happens. All right, Israel 365 news. Can Israel afford to stand up to America? I think it should be the other way. Can America stand up to Israel? Because they never do. Netanyahu is addressing Congress because he has no other option. He's our hero. Um, not really. But according to Israel 365 News, he probably is their hero. He is their hero, I'm sure. Let's see. Looking to see what else there is. There's a video embedded. Michelle Obama may be the next president of the United States. What would that mean for Israel? So what would happen if Big Mike becomes president? Israel wants to know. So anyway, that's all in there. And then I want to show you guys this. Now this was, um, if you guys don't know um, wh where I was the last couple weeks, I was up in Indiana um, which is where my mo my mother lived. It's where I grew up, and um, I was not born there. I was born in Kansas City, Missouri. But um, yeah, I grew up there. And um, as soon as I finished high school, um, I hightailed it out of there and moved to Los Angeles. Believe it or not, but it was to um, be part of the music industry, which I did do. I'm still involved in music, um, but no longer live in LA. I'm, I'm in Nashville now, as you guys know. So. Um, I've made some interesting discoveries in my mom's place the last week or so. I've been there for a couple of weeks, helping her sort through things and um, put the property up for sale. If you guys don't know, she had a stroke back in um, the fall last, last year. So I spent some time up there with her. We ended up moving her to Tennessee where I am, and um, she's living with us. So anyway, we had to do something with her property, which is what I've spent the last two weeks dealing with. Um, everything is went well I wouldn't say smoothly but it did go it did go well and we ended up having some some good help so in the process though I've discovered a few interesting old newspapers that I found literally lining the drawers in some of her um, dressers and cabinets and stuff but this particular newspaper is you know she lived her early her early life in Kansas City Missouri which is where I was born again um, so you can see the date across the top of the uh, picture there. Kansas City Star, Wednesday, January 12th, 1966. So I took some pictures of this newspaper because I, I just thought it was really interesting. And again, it was, it was basically a mint condition newspaper. No, not 46. 66. 1966. Um, January 12th, 1966. So the ads in here will show you the difference in the economy of 1966 versus today. And I think you guys will get a kick out of this. I, I thought it was really interesting. And I, this isn't the only paper that I found. I found others as well. This is the only one that I have in my possession at this moment. I've got other stuff being shipped here. Um, so we'll have others to go through. Yeah, January 12, 1966. Yeah, that's correct. So this is... Um, you can you can buy this entire Macy's bedroom suit in 1966. It's called Macy's Magnificent Mediterranean Bedroom Suit. Everything you see for $299. And today, if you had $299 to spend, you might be able to buy what? This dresser, maybe? I don't know. Probably that. 
So it's yeah, five pieces. So I just wanted to show you guys this. This is this is the economy in um, again 1966. That was just a Macy's ad on one of the pages. And this particular paper I have is about, I think it's eight eight different pictures here I've got. And now this is a uh, uh, some article headlines and stuff on Vietnam. Yank troops push on. GIs kill more Viet Cong and destroy big tunnel network, seizing vast quantities of materials and tons of rice. So, stuff about Vietnam. And um, if you guys want to read through this, it's pretty, fairly high, I guess, fairly high resolution. Here, let me turn, turn off the chat so you guys can see this a little bit better. Um, kind of interesting as far as the... Um, you know, some of the different articles and the ad advertisements and stuff in here. here. Let me turn this off too. All right, and then, so we have uh, Montgomery Ward's ads. Interesting, huh? Pillows and all kinds of stuff. And, again, this is Kansas City Star, January 1966. So that's page two. I've got page three, Dying Town to Get New Life as Resort Center. I just thought it was really neat. It's kind of like looking back in history. Men's suits, top coats, sport coats, and slacks. You see how people dress. Look, people with hats and all kind of stuff. Dress shoes. Um, various things on this page. This is page four. Macy's ad again. I guess Macy's ran a lot of ads. Lamps. You can buy an organ. Thomas Organ with many features for only seven ninety five. Pretty funny. Or how about you ladies here? Now I know this is sexist. You couldn't possibly do this. You know, you couldn't possibly show a, a woman, a mother, on an ad these days without people getting offended. But that's the way it used to be. She's getting ready to put her uh, her nightgown, I guess, in the washer and dryer. And you can buy both for one hundred sixty nine ninety five and one hundred forty nine ninety five. So, wow. That is strange. Those prices seem like almost alien to me. Two lamps for $40. So again, Macy's. I guess Macy's was running ads in Kansas City Star quite a bit here. And uh, let's see here. Carload sale, Montgomery Ward. Here's got, we've got Bozo the Clown on one of these pictures here. You can buy this entire dramatic styling Solid state AM FM stereo for only two forty eight. This whole thing. Stereo. They show the cabinet, but they don't actually show the stereo. I thought that was kind of funny. Here's a nineteen inch television for eighty six dollars. Montgomery Ward, I guess, was one of the big advertisers, maybe. Pennies. And again, I thought this was kind of funny. James and Jane hold the lead as the name choices. London. This is in in London it says James and Jane stayed on top of the annual analysis of the names that Britons gave to their children. John and Mary still held the line in the number two spot. Peter and Emma are making a comeback. The analysis is made by J. W. Lever, a reader of the London Times. Each year he keeps an eye on the paper's birth column. In nineteen sixty five said Lever readers of the Times announced, I can't make out the number, 6,802 maybe, births. The top name chart, the top name charts are uh, Royce maybe, James, John, Charles, William, David, Richard, Andrew, Edward, Mark, and Peter. Girls' names, Jane, Mary, Elizabeth, Sarah, Anne or Anne with an E, Louise, Caroline, Emma, Claire, and Helen. Adam, Dominic, Henry, and Patrick have increased in favor. Jonathan, Matthew, Michael, Robert, and Simon seem to be losing appeal. Harriet, Julia, and Rebecca were more popular in 1963. Uh, Flo Flona? Flona? No, Fiona. Fiona, it's hard to read. Fiona... Jennifer, Jacqueline, and Rachel were on the slide. So now the number one name, of course, in Britain is, for babies, is Muhammad, not James. So, yeah, 
I thought that was kind of funny. Anyway, you want a stove? You can buy a stove for $118. Again, mint condition newspaper found on found by myself on the um, the floor of the well the the bottom parts of the drawers in some of my mother's um, old dressers. Pretty funny. She still had it. She folded it up herself and <laughs> put it on the put it on the uh, bottoms of the dressers, you know, the the dresser drawers to protect them. This page was a little blurry I think for some reason, but um you can see how, you know, these are illustrations are how guys looked. And look, no one's overweight. No one's overweight at all. It was pretty uh, few and far between, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, thought that was kind of neat. Some pretty cool old uh, memorabilia type stuff. I've got some other things I want to show you guys too over the next few shows. I don't want to bore you to tears or anything, but we'll probably save it for the uh, end of the broadcast. And um, we will, um, you know, certainly uh, talk about it more whenever uh, whenever that comes comes around. I, those are the only ones that I have. Um, those are the only ones that I have um, bothered to take pictures of at this point. We're still kind of sorting through some stuff at this point, but but yeah, there'll be other things. I found a really cool um, right here. I'll show it. Really cool nineteen or uh, twenty twenty calendar from the Reagan Ranch. It's got um, some interesting quotes and things from Ronald Reagan on here too. So I'll take some pictures of that and we'll look at that at some point too. I've got some other fun stuff we can look at. More old newspapers and things like that. If you're if you're so interested, if you're interested in any of that stuff, I thought it was kind of fascinating actually. So, anyways, yeah, very cute. Thank you, Kelly. Appreciate that. Um, kind of cool to look at old memorabilia like that and just imagine how the world was when it was a little more sane than it is today. All right. So there's the diamond disc on Substack. If you're interested in um, being on the list, you'll get all the links sent to you on Tuesday when I put it all together. <clears throat> so, yeah, feel free to be on there. That generation did that with the papers. Yep, they sure they sure did. Yeah, there was no social media, it was just newspapers. That was their social media. And um, they had telephones, that was about it. <clears throat> so, yeah, and then um, follow me on X if you're not already. I'm getting a few, a few new followers on there, so thanks for those who have... Um, not really subscribe, you just follow on um, X, x.com slash the diamond report, but report is abbreviated RPRT, the diamond RPRT. I thought this was funny. It was, this was just a retweet from uh, Liz Churchill, somebody that I follow on Twitter. I thought that was pretty funny. Fake president, fake intellectual, fake scientist, fake woman, fake American, fake doctor. Mm -hmm. That kind of sums it up. A uh, tweet from Libs of TikTok. So, <laughs> this is about more about Biden. Biden told Biden said that he told his staff he needed to get more sleep. Multiple people familiar with what took place in the meeting said he repeatedly referenced pushing too hard and not listening to his team about his schedule and said he needed to work fewer hours and avoid events after 8 p.m. <laughs> Uh, according to one of the people familiar with what took place at the meeting, after Governor Josh Green of Hawaii, a physician, asked Biden questions about the status of his health, get this, Mr. Biden replied that his health was fine, it's just my brain, he added. According to three people familiar with what took place, that remark got, that remark that some in the room took as a joke, but at least one governor did not and was puzzled by I would say that's pretty much accurate. His health is fine. It's just his brain. So, that kind of sums it up. So, and then he also, they also reposted this. Realize where we are, where we're at, and this has to be tweeted from the president's account. Let me say this as clearly as I can, Biden says. I'm the sitting president of the United States, and I'm the nominee of the Democrat Party. I'm staying in the race. Guarantee you he did not tweet that and wouldn't know how to tweet that. But it is pretty funny. And this staff right here, this is this is Biden's speech writing team. This is them. 
taking a, a group selfie. So it takes that many people to write a Biden speech, but only one person to horse it all up. So anyways, that is um, all on the um, Diamond Report on Twitter. If you guys want to follow along there, if you're not already on Twitter, um, you should get an account. They have some good some good stuff on there now. It's better than it used to be, for sure. Okay, and here's Take It to the Lord End Times Dates on YouTube, which you guys, many of you are on now. And then I'm Diamond Disc on most of these other platforms. If you guys are on these other places, um, please follow there. I think that would be the best way you can help uh, what I'm doing if you're um, interested in doing that. If you're not, then that's fine. You don't have to be. Um, I get it. But note, there were no commercials. I was not wasting your time at any point in this show, or at least if I was, I didn't mean to. But um, yeah, no commercials. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Just asking that you share the information, share the show if you like it. And if you don't like it, then don't share it. It's real simple. And if you don't like it, don't bother complaining because it will fall on deaf ears. Anyway, Diamond Disc on Rumble. And I'm also on um, BitChute, which they have changed their format. They've updated their website a little bit. Not sure if I like it better or not. But anyway, it is different. BitChute.com slash channel slash Diamond Disc is where that is. Diamond Report on there. And then um, Brighteon as well. They've also updated their site recently. And band.us at the Diamond Report is where the band group is. And that is something that uh, Miss Emily and I manage and um, got a good a good group of people in there. So yeah, feel free to join band, band.us, totally free. And you can um, get in there and Share info if you're uh, interested. And it says, um, yeah, 79 members at the moment. So, yeah, it's growing very slowly, but it is growing. So that's good. And I just remind you, this is fine. This is fine. I like this um, this picture. This kind of sums things up, I think, pretty nicely. The house is burning. But it's fine. It's fine. No need to worry. Don't do anything any differently. Anyway, well, that is it for me tonight. We've got one more video if you guys want to hang around for it. Um, definitely feel free to do that. I was looking in the comments and didn't really see anything that jumped out at me as far as uh, things I needed to address. And you can imagine after the last two weeks I've had, I'm very, very tired. So I think I'll call it a night tonight. But uh, thank you guys for being here. It's good to be back. I don't plan on missing any more shows at this point. Um, you know, far as I know, unless there's no power or no, um, you know, if we're in the middle of World War III or who knows what at that point. But, um, yeah, I think um, I think we're, we're here to stay at this point. So I'll give you more updates on uh, my mother as we go. But she's doing well. And um, we didn't, like, kill each other over the course of the last two weeks. I think we've been in each other's presence pretty much, like, 95% of the time every day for two weeks. So if... You know, you pretty much have to really like your mom to be able to put up with that. But um, it, it ended up working out fine. We got some some good help that we needed, and um, we got things sorted pretty well. So we're still waiting on a few uh, loose ends to be tied up, but we're uh, we're we're getting really really close on that. So um, I'll bring some of the other you know show and tell type things. We'll call it show and tell, and uh, we'll do that in the next broadcast. Just kind of find. Some old, some old things, some newspapers to talk about, and the calendar I already showed you guys. So, anyway, I hope you guys have a blessed week. We'll do it again next week. Uh, it will be the 14th, right? So, July the 14th, 10 p.m. start time. I've decided to keep it at that, uh, at that start time on Sunday nights, at least for the uh, foreseeable future. We'll just, we'll just keep it there. I think people really tend to like this um, time for the most part. There's a few people who would like me to stick with Sunday and do the show earlier, but I just can't really right now with my schedule. So anyway, thank you guys for being here tonight and for hanging out and uh, spending time going through the news. And there's always stuff to look at for sure. We'll, we'll uh, have more things to uh, investigate and look at next week. Got a few ideas on what that might be and um, just didn't really have time to put it all together because I just got back to um, to Nashville um, last night. So I hadn't really had a whole lot of time. But anyway, we'll do it again next week. Hope you guys have a blessed week, and uh, stay tuned for this uh, last video. We'll watch this last one here together, and we'll see you guys again very soon. 
Blessings, all. Love you guys. Talk to you later.